Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. As we continue the dissection of the neck, we now proceed into the anterior triangular region. Recall that we had platysmal muscle that is reflected, that the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the midline area then forms with the base of the jaw the anterior triangle. So base of the jaw above following down along the midline, across the thyroid cartilage, to the top of the sternum, and then angling upward along the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid is the region of the anterior triangle of the neck. As we proceed through this and other dissections, you will see that these different areas of the anterior triangle are subdivided by names by other muscles. But particularly now, we will look at two of these, and that is the omohyoid muscle, the midline, and the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. We saw the lower portion of the omohyoid muscle previously in the posterior triangle of the neck. This is a muscle that arises from the border of the scapular notch on the superior border of the scapula and passes beneath the sternocleidomastoid muscle which we will now reflect and turn upward. And now it continues up crossing beneath this large vein that we had seen at the anterior sternocleidomastoid muscle and the omohyoid then inserts upward into the hyoid bone. There are other flat muscles like omohyoid here in the anterior neck region. These muscles are surrounded by their own fascia, another layer of fascia of the neck. Remember that the superficial layer surrounded the trapezius and sternocleidomastoid. Now we have a muscular or infrahyoid fascial layer. Let's look at these infrahyoid muscles then for a moment. In order to clarify this area, what I'm going to do is to cut this large vein, reflect it downward so that we have a better exposure of the muscles that we want to study. Again, we have the inferior portion of the omohyoid the superior belly of omohyoid going to the hyoid bone. In the front of the throat, coming from the back of the sternum and passing upward to the hyoid bone is the sternohyoid muscle. Beneath it, there is another muscle arising from the sternum and passing upward to the thyroid cartilage. This is the sternothyroid muscle. From the back of the sternum upward into the thyroid cartilage at the side of the thyroid cartilage rather than right on the midline, but off to the side. The problem with these three muscles that we've been talking about is that they all sound the same omohyoid, sternothyroid, sternohyoid. All of these tend to confuse one when you're studying. So study each and every muscle separately, get to know it, and then continue on to the next one. Again, the inferior and superior belly of the omohyoid, the sternohyoid, and deep within the sternothyroid muscle. All of these muscles are innervated. The innervation comes from uh, the cervical plexus. This is the deep portion of the cervical plexus. And the individual nerves from cervical 1 and 2 join together. And then cervical 2 and 3 joins together into two specific nerves. 
the superior branch and the inferior branch of the ansa cervicalis. Ansa means loop, cervicalis means that it's a loop found in the cervical region. And here we can see, deep within now, the carotid sheath. The carotid sheath is a bundle, a fibrous wrapped bundle of artery, vein, and nerve. And the three major components here, first laterally in this deep bundle, the internal jugular vein extending from the deep head region uh, downward towards the sternoclavicular joint area. More medial to it then, we see the very large common carotid artery. And behind and between the two of them is this the vagus nerve, the tenth cranial nerve. Those are the three major components of the carotid sheath. This, the, ex the internal jugular vein, the common carotid artery, and behind and between the two of them can pick up the vagus nerve. Also in that carotid sheath will run this ansa cervicalis. And the best thing to do to get a clear view of it is to, for this demonstration, is to cut the omohyoid muscle, reflect it, and now we can see branches coming from the plexus. And here is the one limb of the ansa cervicalis, and deep within is the other limb. And as you clear up this area, you will note that the innervation to these muscles is to the underside of the muscle or, as an example here, to the sternohyoid from its lateral aspect. These are all branches of ansa cervicalis. In addition to this area, we want to look uh, a little bit more closely at the relationship, once again, of the carotid sheath. It's an extremely important relationship of this internal jugular vein and the very large common carotid artery, which passes upward. And now you can see where it is beginning to split in this area into an internal and an external carotid artery. There is a point of bifurcation, high up by the angle of the jaw, which is located right in this region here. So follow this upward in order to identify these. Now, as the carotid sheath was dissected, we had to clean away the connective tissue and other structures. The fourth most important structure in the carotid sheath in addition to the internal jugular and common carotid artery and the vagus nerve are the lymphatics. Major lymph channels are found along this area, intertwining themselves with the arteries and veins all the way down to the base of the neck. This deep cervical group of lymph nodes all along here are very important for the drainage of the head structures particularly of the mouth, of the face, of the cheeks, and of the tongue. And as we go down into this area, at the base of the neck, an extremely large lymph node can be seen in this carotid sheath area. Covered with fat yet, but undisturbed as to position and very obvious when uh, examining this region. In addition to these kinds of structures, there are also structures indicated in your dissection guide uh, in addition to these that you should review and study along with this. There is no way that we could show all of the fascial layering, for example, nor all of the very small branches uh, of the nerves and of the other uh, blood vessels in this region. So this should be looked at with great care uh, through the textbook and the atlas before proceeding. The section again, very important, 
must be done meticulously, else as you clean off these muscles, for example, again here, the sternohyoid, you could easily remove its nerve supply that's coming in along on the side. If you had cleaned this muscle off entirely along here, you would have lost this nerve supply. So be careful when working in this area. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.